Hey bosses, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are an OG, you've been here for a while. Hey girl, hey. I wanted to come to you all very quickly to talk about some marketing strategies, more specifically seven marketing strategies to get you started on marketing your small business. Um, specifically, you guys know that I'm a, if you don't know, now you know, I'm a boutique owner. And so these marketing strategies though are pretty general. Um, if you guys don't know, I do do marketing professionally. And so this is kind of like the strategy that I walk clients through. And um, so it's, it's, it can apply. So if you happen upon this video and you are not a boutique owner, well, you are still in the right place because these seven strategies can still get you started on um, creating your marketing plan, your marketing strategy for your small business or whatever you're working on. So if you want to learn about the seven ways that I recommend of how to market your small business um, or boutique, uh, stay tuned. So the first thing, if you are not new here, y'all know I always like to start with a why or basically a goal, um, some type of foundational, uh, directional type of thing. And so um, in a marketing strategy, I am going to be looking down because y'all know I have my, my notebook so that we can keep each other um, accountable, precise, because um, sometimes I can ramble. So nothing to see, nothing new here um, in terms of how I do things, but um, I will be looking down. So if you see me looking down, that's why, just to keep us, you know, on task. So um, one of the first things that you want to uh, do is to define your your goals. Uh, you know, I, I think that it's, um, Sometimes we're really all the time is haphazard to um, create a marketing strategy or a marketing plan and not know, you know, what your goal is. Like, why are you why are you marketing something like what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? Those goals, if you own a boutique like myself, could be that you want to increase sales. It could be that you want to, um, you know, market a new release. It could be that you're building brand awareness. It could be that you are, you have an event coming up like a pop-up shop and you want to market that. It can be tied to basically your broader, broader company goals or something very, very, very specific. Um, marketing is one of those things that, uh, you know, it's just something that you're, you're going to have to do. Um, and if you are a new boutique owner, a new business owner, it's something that you need to get comfortable with because it's one of those things that I personally do not recommend outsourcing early on because marketing allows you to understand your brand and understand your company and understand your offer. Because during the process of marketing, you're going to be tweaking. We'll get into that later, but you're going to be tweaking. You're going to be discovering. And so to give that, to someone else too soon or early on uh, I mean I think that that's not it's not the best thing to do um honestly that that's what I think and I think it's something that you you just need to get comfortable with you can of course lean on other people for their expertise but you really should be at the table this is something that you don't outsource and have somebody else do uh, without your at least your oversight if you, you know, for whatever reason, don't feel comfortable doing it yourself. So um, when we're talking about defining your your goals, someone else may not be able to really do that for you. You're going to have to have some type of intimate knowledge of what you, you're trying to do. And so um, defining your goal is definitely the first step to, uh, you know, marketing your business. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is to define your audience. And really, if you go back to maybe four or five videos you know ago i'll put it up here um i talk about creating a persona and this is important because as you go on the journey of building your business you're going to learn so much about your audience so much about your customer that you're going to be able to tweak that persona to um go from something that you're projecting something that you want to something that is it's going to either confirm what you you know said you wanted in the planning process or you're going to have to tweak it. I personally had to do both. I, I more or less knew who my customer was, who I planned to, to market to, and who I wanted my customer, customer to be. Definitely lined up. I tweaked some, some of it slightly, um, but for the most part, I was pretty much on target. You That might be the case for you, or 
you might might find out that as you start pushing your product out there and start getting familiar with your messaging and your customer and your product and as your product grows that your audience um, shifts completely from who you wanted that person to be and that's okay um, the main thing is is to to define that audience and you know to make sure that whatever you're creating that they're at the forefront of that marketing plan and that marketing strategy um some of the things that you would want to do with that audience and i won't go deep into this is um you know create your funnel your sales funnel um kind of you know how do you interact with them when you're just meeting them right how do you interact with them when they've made a purchase how do you interact with them when you notice that they're you know following you but they're not taking any action you know aka making a purchase or you know interacting with you in whatever way you're you're wanting them to interact you want to create that funnel um so that you know how to market or to communicate with them i think a lot of times when we talk about marketing we forget that um you know we're human okay we're people you know all this is is people talking to people okay i have it's just the difference is, is i have an offer that you might like and so my job as a boutique owner or the owner of a small business is to be able to communicate that to you um but if you get to the core of what you're doing you're literally communicating an offer and you're packaging that up for your ideal customer so when you're thinking about your audience you want to um start to kind of build whatever that funnel is um that's going to get you to your bottom line so the next thing that you're going to do now that you know what your goals are and you know you know what your who your audience is for the most part you've you know kind of created a little you know funnel or at least a pathway of how you're going to communicate with them or who you know what stage they are with your company um you're going to define your channels so when i say channels i mean your marketing channels so that includes social media email website um uh, paper mail so mail uh, postcards standard letter um billboards um tv broadcasts all of those things are channels and uh, you're going to want to um, define what those channels are by your comfort level and also where your audience typically is so for example if your audience is typically on social media um, then you're going to want to dive in deep to social media and say okay within social media where are they hanging out are they in face or are they on facebook are they on twitter are they on instagram and then that's where you're going to zero in on that specific channel and that's where you're going to put most of your effort if your um, audience is in multiple areas then you're going to want to show up in those areas as well but you also want to keep in mind your comfort level this is where we can get ourselves in trouble because we strain and we try to be everywhere to everybody and that's not especially as a small business owner and you're a team of one that's first of all it's not strategic second of all it you, you it's not sustainable so it's something that's going to fall by the wayside and you're not going to be able to keep that up so define the channel that where your audience is primarily and where you have the most comfort level and then once you kind of get a comfort level or of rhythm on that particular channel you'll be able to be able to expand and move on to the next place where your audience is so first you want to find out where your audience is on what channel and then dive in deeper to that get that set up and get that in the rhythm and you know you're consistent there and then go to the next channel where your audience is and then start building that up and then eventually you'll be you'll you'll have a marketing channel kind of suite if you want to call it of where you're pushing out content and where you're building your audience at the same time so the next thing that you're want, you're going to want to do now that you've defined your goal, now that you've defined your audience, and now that you know what channels you're going to be on, you're going to want to create content that's compelling, that's on your specific channel of focus. You want to focus on long form content and also short form content. A lot of times it's easy to kind of, you know, start off with long form content and then piece that out into short form content, depending on what channel you're going to be um, pushing things out on. So for example, let's take, um, let's take Instagram, right? Because Instagram is one of those uh, platforms that you really can do everything within Instagram in terms of social media so you can create long form content so long form content on instagram would be ig stories or um, igtv 
right so you can create a however long video um, i forgot what the maximum maximum of minutes you can record a video but you can create a longer form video on igtv from igtv you can create a post on your feed because you can post on igtv that can post to your feed so now that's a feed post and then you could take a piece of that video and make a reel out of it to reach even more people and then you can kind of take pieces of your video and put it in your stories to highlight certain points so that one piece of content that you took time to create is now broken off into multiple areas of your preferred channel now if you find that your people are on instagram but also you're building your email list which is what you should be doing at all stages and at all costs because that's one of the only channels that you truly 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 own is your email list you can actually take some of those recordings and drop it into the email so as a link or as a gif um, or a GIF, G-I-F, um, so that, you know, it's dynamic content and you're telling people, hey, check this out on Instagram or hey, check this video out here. Um, you're basically breaking out that long form piece of content into something that people can consume no matter where they are. So the other thing when you're creating content is to make sure at the core of your creation, you're making sure that you're telling your story and you're saying it in your own voice. Okay. You don't want to like, this is, this gets kind of um, weird because you know, you have people who are like, well, I want to be professional because I'm a business. Well, you define professionalism to your audience, your, you know, audience. Um, let's look at, um, slutty vegan, right? They, could be looked at as being kind of vulgar right or you know they kind of or uh, what do you want to call it um suggestive right but their customers love it they love that that's that's how so when you walk into slutty vegan that is through and through on the menu is how their um uh, cooks talk to each other is how you know the waiter talks to what a person taking your order how they talk to the customer so you expect that because that's the voice that they want to have for their company and so um don't get caught up into um someone else's idea of professionalism or their voice you need to make sure that whatever you decide is going to be your company's voice is something that you're comfortable with so that you can show up authentically um i think that um it's so easy for uh, customers to be able to see that you're not being authentic and that a company is not being authentic and they won't trust you if, if they feel that you're not authentic. So you want to make sure that you're communicating to your folks, you know, in a way or your customers in a way that they um, feel like you're authentic. It's your voice. You if they meet you in person, if they see you at that pop up shop, you're the same way. If they see you at an event or randomly on the sh on the street and they know you own a company, that you embody that voice of your company. So there's that level of consistency so that your customer can trust you as a company and as a CEO, as an owner of your company. One of the other things with content creation, and the reason why we're parked here a little bit longer than the other stuff is because content is king, okay? Um, it just is what it is. Like you wanna make sure that you are creating great and dope content. And that is going to, especially when you're starting out and you're establishing your brand, content is how people are gonna to get to know you, is how they, you're gonna build trust, is how you're gonna be able to communicate your offer. Content is king for you. OK, especially when you're talking about free, when you're talking, you know, for the most part free, um, when you're talking about organic, that's content is where it is at. And so that's why we're parking here and we're kind of, you know, dissecting it a little bit more than the other areas. OK, um, but speaking of that, you want to provide value, providing value in your content is important because it allows you to stand out. So how many boutiques are out? thousands okay thousands are starting every, or hundreds at least are starting every day and nine times out of ten your product offering is not necessarily unique um especially if we're all shopping at the same vendor okay so that means why would someone who finds you on instagram but found another boutique want to buy the same skirt from you that they can get from someone somewhere else OK, don't add pricing into it because that's a whole different conversation. If we are at the same price, why would someone want to buy from you compared to someone else that's selling the same thing? 
and that's where your content comes in that's where you establish your value now your value could be that you create dope content is entertaining it's informative um basically you are educating your customer your customer feels like they're getting a superior service they feel like they're buying into a lifestyle whatever your angle is when you're creating content that's going to determine your value keep your value and what you offer anytime you're creating a piece of content keep that in the back of your mind okay um and then the last thing um and i haven't really talked a lot about this because it can honestly a lot of this can be you know a, a video on its own um but your website now your website the, the thing that i'm gonna say here um as it relates to content is make sure that the content and how you're uh building your website or who if you get someone else to build it is that it's seo optimized and so this is going to help you get organic traffic it's going to um, help you stand out in the out google algorithm and search and so that's a, a way to kind of um it takes a long time so it's not like it's going to happen overnight but um over time you'll start ranking for certain keywords as long as you're making sure that your website is optimized for certain keywords pertaining to your industry okay now i can make a whole separate video i'm about seo and making sure your website is optimized for seo but google university has a lot of information on that so i do um, recommend at least starting there and familiarizing yourself with that because seo also affects your social media strategy as well so keep that in mind seo is definitely something that um you should get comfortable with um as you talk about marketing for your small business or boutique the other thing with the website that i think some people don't really think about when they're building it or when they have someone else build it is user experience that's one of the first things after you optimize it for seo is optimize it for your customer so go and actually make a purchase on your website go through it and act like a customer trying to find the things that you want type something in the search bar find go on there and act like a customer and really see what their journey is and when they're on your website do that on your desktop do that on your cell phone do that on your ipad or tablet whatever the case may be because that's where your customer is going to be accessing your website and the way websites are built now they look different when they're uh, mobile friendly or mobile um, responsive those are two different things google it no i'm joking but no there there are honestly there are two different things so mobile responsive or or mobile friendly okay um or um if it's on the desktop so you're you're going to want to see your website interact with your website on all of those different things so that you understand or see any kinks or hiccups in your process I will also recommend you having friends and family make a purchase on your website or go through the motions of finding something on your website because um, if you're building it yourself, you might, you know, you know how it is. Like you might not see something that somebody else is seeing because you're in it all the time. Um, so you start to get kind of blind to certain things because you've been working on it or you've been staring at it or, or in it all day. So have somebody else who's a friend or family member be able to to kind of go through that website to make sure that it is optimized appropriately for your customer experience. OK, so um, that that's that's not it on websites, but um, we can definitely dive in deeper at another time about the website. But those are the things that you definitely want to keep in mind as you are, um, you know, creating your marketing plan and your campaigns. The fifth thing that um, I think is one of those things that people don't necessarily like um, that's a part of marketing, but in 2021, it just is what it is and it's not changing. Um, you have to pay to play, okay? Um, whether that's on social media or whether that's on Google, um, you know, ads, like all of those things, like you have to pay to play. Um, right now, Facebook and Instagram ads, social media ads in, in general, are definitely a place to start to you know do pay advertisement um but this accounts for you know um billboards and you know other areas or you know getting a post on a website you know of a um a, of a complimentary brand or you know or you know paying um a page on instagram who does promo which that's a whole nother conversation but it is an avenue that people use to grow their brand and so you're going to have to pay to play um, 
And in general, if you're getting into business, y'all, you you got to you got to pay to play. Whether that's with your inventory, you got to pay, you got to invest funds into your business um in order for it to really take off. So, um don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to play um in that space um and definitely put that into your strategy. The other the sixth thing that you want to consider as you're building out your marketing plan or marketing strategy for your business is retaining customers. OK, we don't always want to go fishing for new customers in terms of every time we're running a campaign. We want to as at the same time that we're fishing. OK, we want to be cultivating and stewarding and, and loving on our cus our past customers and making them feel special because they have taken out the time to to um, patronize our brand um you know interact with us or whatever the case may be whatever your brand offering is they accepted the offer so we want to reward them by making sure that we have some type of plan within our marketing strategy that um focuses in on retaining them okay so definitely want to build that into there um but the other piece about retaining customers is building a community now these customers that actually cross over and convert it they are part of your community when you have happy customers and when you have a customer that feel, feels like they are taken care of, they are going to be what I like to call evangelists. They are going to be fans of your brand and they are going to tell people, which is word of mouth. OK, they are going to tell people about their experience. They're going to tell their friends, family, or uh, maybe do a post on social media to talk about how great their experience is. So that's another reason why you want to make sure you're building that into your marketing plan and marketing strategy. And the last thing is to be consistent. And I know, and I say this for, for last on purpose because a lot of people say that and you don't really understand what that means, right? But be consistent in all of these things. Watch and repeat the steps that I just mentioned and, and do it consistently, especially when we get, we talk about the content, defining our channel, showing up in our channels, learning how to do pay advertisement, um, retaining our customers, that should be consistent. Um, and that kind of goes into the whole idea that marketing is not a one-off thing. It is cyclical. That means that all of it is it's cyclical and it's layered, meaning that one hand washes the other. So if you're sending out an email, you better make sure that website is up to date. If you're sending out an email, you better make sure you hit up social media. If you're sending a social media or you're doing something on social media, then you need to be sending out an email at the same time. And all at the center of that is your home base, which is your website that needs to constantly be up to date. So and when you're thinking about your marketing strategy, you can't just think of one dimensionally like you have to think in a layered approach because each thing that you do is going to affect the other thing and eventually help to create the brand awareness awareness that you want it's going to help increase your sales all of those things will work together for your benefit if you do it right and you do it consistently okay um and that's it y'all that is it um so that is the, that's it in terms of my top seven things especially if you're getting started out in marketing um <clears throat> those are my top seven things that you need to consider i think if i were to look at the seven and pull out what two things would be the most important thing if you're just getting started and you're like I have no idea of what marketing is. First of all, look up what marketing is. Like literally Google marketing and, and get comfortable with that definition. I'm not being funny. I'm being serious. Okay. <laughs> um, and then I would say the next two things that I would say is the most important is your content strategy. So, you know, content is king. And then defining your audience. Uh, I would say those two things, because if you don't know who your audience is, you can't market. And if you don't have content, you can't market everything else. Once you get your audience and you get your um, your uh, content together, you can push that out like you can push out your your uh, you can do pay to play. You can retain your customers. You can you can do all the rest of the stuff while while kind of focusing in on those two. So dive in deeper. Have a session with Google. OK, um, leave some comments. Y'all can reach out to me. Leave some comments below if you have some questions. Um, and if you know some things or two that work for your business, drop it in so everyone else can see, you know, this is a community. We're learning together and 
that's it y'all so um thank you so much for watching my video and make sure you like comment and subscribe and also share with the friend sharing is caring we are a community like i said so share with your friend who is also looking to build their um business and you know step up their marketing game as well and so um once you do that make sure you tune back in next week for the next video um thank you guys for watching i will see y'all next time